Okay, so we're back. And what we're going to do here is fix up a few things that I had to rush and leave off in the last tutorial because running out of YouTube time, running out of 15 minutes. I wish they'd give me my unlimited time already, but oh well. Anyway, so this is in our key down function of our game. And what we want to do is obviously if our left key is released, we don't want to change that. We want to change that comment from if our left key is pressed, then the left key is pressed. And if our right key is pressed, then in the if block, our right key is pressed. That's why we're setting these variables to true, because the left key is down and the right key is down when we're in the key down function. So now we've got a little bit of uh, skeleton set up. What we need to do is listen for, well, we're already listening for when the key is down and up, but we need to react to that now. So what we need to do is set up a game loop. So just above our event listeners for our stage, I'm going to set up a game loop event listener. And this is going to be applied to our stage once again. So our stage, I'm going to add an event listener. And this time we're going to listen for the enter frame event. So what the enter frame event does is pretty much what Flash Develop says here. It's dispatched when the playhead it enters a new frame. Now we're only running with one frame in our Flash document over here, but it's still entering this frame every time. So we're listening for when we come into that frame and we're going to run a custom function called game loop. So just like before, I'm going to create that function with Control shift one in Flash Develop, create the event handler. So this function here, it's going to run 30 times every second, because this is what we've set our stage frames per second to. So it's running 30 frames in that one second. So in here, we want to test if our left key is being pressed. And if it is down, we know that from our left key is down variable. So if it is being pressed down over here, we're going to move our player character to the left side of the screen. So if our left key is currently down, then I'm going to go to the next line and tab it in. Move our player to the left. So let's set up the code for that. If our left key is down, so if that equals true, and notice I'm using the double equals here because whenever we're testing something, we use double equals. Whenever we're setting something, we use a single equals. So if our left key is down, let's go down to the next line, open a curly brace, press enter, and that will surround this in a closing curly brace. So let's move our player to the left. So we'll take our MC player object and we'll move its X position minus equals um, say five. So what's happening here is our X position of our player object. So if I click on my player, you can see it's got an X and a Y position. And if I move it to the left, you can see that X position number up here getting lower. So what this line of code means is take whatever MC player's X position currently is and subtract five from it. So every time we run through the game loop, it's going to take MC player X minus five. And it goes through the next loop, take what that MC player X is now and subtract five from that. So it's going to keep moving to the left while our left key is down. And just to illustrate that a bit more, I've got a little document here that I set up. This is how the flash stage works. So up here in the top left corner, we've got um, zero, zero. So X is zero and Y is zero. So X runs across the stage from left to right. So it's zero here and it's 550 here, which is our stage size that we set up in our flash document. But this 550 can also be referred to by the stage.stage stage width. 
So if our stage width was 600 or it was 700, now we don't want to type in the numbers for it because it can change if you know people are going to change the settings. We can always get the value by using stage dot stage width. Now with the Y coordinate, it doesn't start down the bottom left. It starts up the top left here, and Y increases as it goes down the stage. And we'll be getting to that when we set up our missiles because we want them to go up the stage. So we have to minus Y from its position. But here for our player control, if we want to move left on the stage, we need to minus uh, from our X coordinate. And if we want to go right, we want to add to our X coordinate. So back in here, we're minusing to move left. Now, let's set up our right control. If our right key is currently down, then we'll move our player to the right. It's the same deal as before. If our right key is down, and instead of saying double equals true, if I just close the bracket off, that's exactly the same as saying equals true. Because if this statement in here equals true, which our right key is down over here is being set to true, it's going to run what's in our if block anyway. So it's just a little bit of shortcut code. So move our player to the right. So we'll say MC player and move its X position plus equals whatever it previously was, 5. So let's save and test our game. So I'm going to save and press Control Enter. And now if I use my left and right arrow keys, you can see that my player is moving left and right. So, so far so good. We've set up a little bit of a game. Now what we want to do is, if our player moves off the screen, well, at the moment it's just going off the screen. So. We obviously don't want that to happen. We want our player to stay on the screen, otherwise our user it's gonna get lost or where my player go if they come back to it. So what we're gonna do is in our game loop, let's tidy this up because we're gonna be putting a lot of code in this loop, which is gonna be used for almost every sort of movement that we're gonna be using on our screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all this code out of our game loop and I'm gonna set up a new function called um, player control okay it's just going to call a function that we haven't set up yet so I'm going to click in the middle of it press control shift 1 and generate a private function and what we're going to do here is paste all the code in so it's still going to run 30 times a second all this code because we're calling this function here 30 times a second. It's just making our game loop a lot cleaner. Because what we want to do now is we want to clamp our player on the screen so they can't move outside the left of the screen or outside of the right. So let's set up another custom function in here. Call it clamp player to screen or clamp player to stage. And we'll set up that function once again. So in here, we want to let's just uh, get the left side working first. So if our player object, if its x position is over here, we don't want the x key to be moving our player left anymore. We want it to stop here. So we'll say if um, our player. is to the left of the stage so if our player is to the left of the stage let's set our player to the left of the stage now this might sound a little bit confusing but it will make sense in a second I promise you that so let's start coding. If our MC player, if it's X position, 
Now if that's less than zero, then what we want to do is set our player's x position to be zero. So we'll say down here, MC player, x position equals zero. But it's not quite going to work, but I just want to show you this as an example. So our x position of our player, it's referred to by this point here, this little origin point when we set up our movie clip. So this is where we're getting our x coordinate from. So what we're saying now is if our player's x position is zero, so it's on the left of the stage, make our player's x position equal zero. So even if we're holding the left key down, it's not going to go further than this point. But the problem is, obviously, we're cutting our player in half. So what we need to do is we need to shift it over half of the player width to make it stay inside the stage. So what we'll do here is we'll say if MC player's x position is less than zero plus our MC player's width divided by two, so half of our width, then we'll set our MC player's x to zero plus our MC player's width divided by two. So just to clean up the code a bit, we don't need zero in front or the plus, so we can get rid of those two. And what we're basically saying is if our x position is less than our player width, or half of our player width, we're going to set it to our player width. So if I test this movie now and try to move left, I'm holding down the left key and keep pressing it, it's not going to go any further than that point. So let's set up the right key now as well. So going back to our Photoshop document, we know that the stage uh, right is equal to our stage.stage .stage width. Now we can use 550, but it's better to use a relative value instead of hard coding a value in. So let's set up the comments for that. So if our player is to the right of the stage, then let's set our player to the right of the stage. And that should be set, not set up. I'm sure someone spotted that and they're going, oh, you did it wrong. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? So if our MC player's X position is greater than, because this time we're moving right, so if it's greater than our stage dot stage width, and what we're going to do here is if our MC player's X position, if it's greater than our stage dot stage width, so it's over here, which is not right once again, we want it to be uh, stage width minus this time half of our player width. So we'll put stage width minus our MC players dot width divided by two. We're going to set our MC players x position to equal our stage width minus half of our players width. Okay, so let's test if that works now. I'm going to move my character to the right. Ooh, okay, so something weird's happening here. And we're looping over. <laughs> All right, so let's see what's going wrong. So this is right, but what we should do is always put brackets around our um, other operators. So in this case, we're dividing the width by two, so we should really surround them in brackets. And a small little typo here, it should be stage dot stage width, not stage dot width. And that will probably fix up everything. Let's test that again. And you can see our player gets locked to the right side of the screen. So that'll pretty much do it for this tutorial as well. We've got player control working. So let's set up our missiles next. So when we press the spacebar, we're going to fire out a missile and let it shoot up the screen.